for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Sorreo, and joining me today in studio, my good friend, the president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. Eileen, always good to see you. Thank you so much for having me today, Maria. Well, we have a very special show for you today. Normally, the Chamber mm -hmm. would do two events mm -hmm. for Citizen of the Year and for a Salute to Business. Mm -hmm. This year, you're sort of catching up from last year, and so we're going to combine the two events, and we have the opportunity actually to talk to all of the honorees. Let's focus in on business first. Um, I know you have five honorees, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Tell us more yes. about them. Thank you, Maria. So we have five honorees, all of whom were nominated by and selected by a committee of chamber members. And so we are honoring three businesses this year with our Excellence in Business Award. Mm -hmm. And those businesses are Metawar Fine Jewelers, Malaga Bank, and the Palos Verdes Peninsula Association of Realtors. And then receiving the award for the best new business is Great American International Seafood Market. Okay. And finally, the Nonprofit of the Year Award is going to Toberman Neighborhood Center. So well deserving for all of the honorees. We had the chance to sit down and talk to them, so let's take a look. Our first Excellence in Business Award goes to Metawar's Fine Jewelers. Metawars has been serving the Palos Verdes Peninsula community for 41 years. They are renowned for their stunning selection of jewelry and watches, their industry expertise, and their unparalleled levels of customer service. In addition, they are true community partners supporting so many of our nonprofit organizations with generous donations over the years. Robert is also um, appreciated and known for his civic engagement. He volunteers with many organizations, including most notably the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and the City of Rolling Hills Estates. And of course, Metawar Fine Jewelers and Robert and Sheila are always strong advocates for our local businesses and the Chamber of Commerce. We are an organization uh, that consists of over 700 member and, af and affiliate members uh, that do business um, on the Palos Verdes Peninsula and in the surrounding South Bay areas. Okay. Yeah. What kind of things do you do as a group? Oh, well, so our member associates are primarily realtors, um, you know, and uh, our affiliates. Uh, range from a variety of different businesses. You have title, you have lenders, you have natural hazard zone, uh, ha hazard disclosure reports, and um, you know escrow uh, companies and, and things of that nature. So, you know, we really, you know, the purpose of the association is to provide for its members, and uh, through its leadership, we want to improve the competency. Uh, the integrity, the professionalism um, of the members um, so that we better serve the community base. I, um, I've been in the real estate business for going on almost 20 years now and uh, I was never involved with the association for the first maybe 10 years but uh, over the last eight years I became involved and it's really a great way to connect with uh, you know uh, people in the community, my colleagues, um, and, uh, you know, we have a great thing on the peninsula here, and it's, uh, it, it's nice when you have uh, collaboration, people working together for common goals. The PVPAR, P P Palos Verdes Peninsula Association of Realtors, was established over 25 years ago. And uh, a big part of what we do are, you know, fundraising efforts um, for the Peninsula Education Foundation, and we also have a scholarship fund. Um, we do our uh, fundraising through an arm called uh, PVPAR Cares, and uh, you know, so giving back to the community and um, is a big part of, of, of what we do because you know we, you know, promote um, housing and the beautiful views and the values here. You know, it's it's nice to invest back into your community. You know, um, my kids went to the schools here, and uh, you know, uh, our friends, and you know, it's you. You really want to, you know, make the place that you live and and do business a better place to be all the way around. It's wonderful to be receiving this award. Uh, the chamber's always been tremendously supportive, and uh, we enjoy participating in a lot of the uh, opportunities they provided for us. We love going to the uh, uh, the candidate um, forums that they have, and they've always been very supportive in return. We like to support the chamber, and so it's been a great uh, union, and uh, we want to thank you for recognize, recognizing the PVPAR, and we feel like we have a great partnership. 
Working with Malaga Bank is, I would say, it's, it's an experience. It's a good experience. Um, it's an experience of community. Uh, our employees, all of us, we have a genuine concern for our clients because they're our neighbors and friends. I'll tell you the biggest one that we've heard um, from our clients lately is that they are so happy that we answer the phones. Um, especially during the last 24 months, you know, there's a lot of fraud. Um, or if they couldn't get to the bank, um, they needed to uh, help with the transaction, we actually pick up the phones. And it's not an 800 number, it's not calling out of state, it's calling local in their community. I think the bank, I think even 36 years ago when it first opened its doors to the peninsula, has always been committed to giving back to this community. Um, and you'll hear me um, numerous times when I'm out representing the bank is how proud I am to work for an organization that gives back to my community um, and to those organizations that are in my community, making our communities better. Um, 2020 was a little different because of COVID. Um, 2019, we supported over 62 organizations, not just financially, but also through volunteer work. You know, each of the branch managers, along with um, uh, myself and Sasha O'Hara, we choose, you know, we get solicitations, obviously, um, hundreds of them, um, and we like to support our partners. And so we look to see what we can support and we try to get them all. And if we can't do it financially, like I said, we're out there volunteering. Uh, there's several of us that sit on boards um, and that's, that's a big help too to these organizations. It's hard to get board members right now. So I sit on at least six boards right now, which I love, I love. And for me personally, um, and I do believe a lot of our employees, is we want to make a difference. If we can make a difference um, and you know give a couple hours a week or uh, spend a weekend helping out an organization setting up for an event, um, knowing we made a difference, that that's gratifying. From the girls softball league, PV Little League, our Peninsula seniors. Uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, Grand Vision, I mean, there are so many, so many on our list. I'll tell you, in the last 24 months, it has been so extremely important to our area businesses. Eileen and her staff have done such an amazing job, and as chair of the board this year, um, the board has done, the last couple of years, has just done an amazing job helping these businesses navigate through protocols and how to connect with folks and how to pivot their business. So, amazing work. Maria, you and I have a passion and a love for baseball. So I was thinking of Malaga Bank in those terms. And um, in my opinion, I truly believe that we have superior management. We have employees in the right position. We execute our plays. We play with integrity, we respect the game, and all of that uh, leads to a positive outcome and a winning team. Thank you so much um, to the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber for this fabulous award for an amazing organization that's been on the uh, community for 36 years, Malaga Bank. Um, we are very honored and proud to accept this award today, and um, thank you so much. So our business is primarily uh, fresh fish, frozen fish from all around the world. Um, we have a import company in Carson where we import, we're a first importer of fresh and frozen fish that we sell to about 14,000 retailers and distributors around the country. So this was one of our offices that uh, we moved down to the Carson plant down in, in 2017. So we decided that we wanted to turn that into a seafood market since that's what we do. And um, so we designed it, built it, and now here we are and we carry, like I said, all kinds of fresh fish from around the world. We've got um, a lot of imported pastas, pasta sauces, condiments, wine, beer, um, olive oils, high-end olive oils, high-end vinegars, you know, things like that that, are, that you could really make a really nice meal with. And how has the community responded to your market? The community has been awesome. You know, they, they really have embraced us and we can't be more thrilled 
And you know, one of our, our main focuses is we want to be known as a destination spot for fresh fish and specialty food items. And we really pride ourselves on our customer service, you know, because you can always, you know, sell fish, but if you don't have the right people with the right attitudes or demeanors, you know, it's hard for people to come back to that. We have a lot of regular customers. You know, obviously, we're in a, in a neighborhood community, and you know, we know them by their first name. They know us by our first names. They know about our families. We know their children's names, their pets' names. You know, it's really a community-involved store, and you know, we really we in, we enjoy that a lot. We donate to the schools and to other nonprofits. You know, whenever we can. You know, it's the right thing to do. A lot of it is seasonality driven because um, you know, we do have a wide variety of, of fresh wild fish but unfortunately some of those seasons are very short right. and with the pandemic unfortunately last year and in current times a lot of the fishermen weren't able to get out of port to fish so it really put a, a strain on that entire you know, community and so some things have been a little short this year but um, you know, we talk with fishermen, you know, we have great relationships directly with the fishermen. And so they call us when they're heading out and then we give them a wish list of what we're looking for. And then they try their best to, to fulfill it. I don't think most people know that's how it works. Yeah. That is interesting. And I know on the flip side, you were mentioning that, you know, the pandemic of course was a difficult time, but more people came to see you. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, you know, being a small store, you know, we were there. And people said they'd either heard about us or had seen us on, on our PVTV or in news publications and stuff like that, but they just never made it in. When the pandemic hit and everything got locked down, yeah. the grocery stores, as you know, the mainstream ones, were the lines were horrendous. And you know, trying to navigate through that was difficult. So they figured, well, let's go in here, because people were posting on Nextdoor app, Instagram, Facebook, go to Great American International Seafood Market, there's no lines. Wow. Our business, you know, just kept growing and growing and growing. And I was fortunate enough where I could, I was able to get toilet paper and tissues and canned tomatoes and pastas and stay ahead of it so we never ran out of stock. And to the Chamber of Commerce on behalf of Great American International Seafood Market and my business partners, I just want to say thank you very much for, for this. It really means a tremendous amount to us, and we just can't thank you guys enough. Toberman um, celebrated its uh, 118th birthday January 2021, so we're almost 119 years old. Um, Toberman works in the community to address the challenges that, that families have families that are living in poverty in vulnerable communities. And that could be um, housing insecurity, food insecurity, of course, educational attainment, and violence that goes along with um, gang, the gang lifestyle. Okay. How do people find you? So there's different ways. Uh, we partner with a lot of um, other um, community organizations. And so we get referrals from LAPD. We get referrals from social services from other nonprofits. We work with LAUSD, so families find out about us that way. And then a lot of it is word of mouth. And so when there are families in need, people talk to each other and they find out about the services that we have. We really look at each family individually so that we can provide wraparound services based on their need. So if a family comes to us and they're having challenges with their teens or tweens that are getting involved in the gang lifestyle, we'll have case managers work with the young people as positive adult role models, working with them to either prevent them from joining gangs or get them out of gangs. If a family is living in poverty, we really look at what got them there and then how can we give them the tools and skills they need so that they're empowered to get themselves out. So looking at housing insecurity, if they right now with the pandemic are behind on the rent, we can provide rental relief, utility relief. Um, if they can't afford food, we have a food pantry where we'll deliver food right to their house and then really work with them whether they need help with education or with um, a attaining a better job and um, really help them with financial coaching to be able to have savings and um, really lead their, their best life. We um, reach out via social media, newsletters. Um, we advertise all the different opportunities we have that way. We also partner with um, organizations like um, 
the volunteer center and post on there. We go directly to businesses and have different opportunities that business, businesses can get involved with. And then working also with our young people, high school students, um, National Charity League, uh, Los Hermanos is another one, um, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, so that we have um, peer mentors as well as adults that get involved that way. So many different ways we, can, we get people involved. You know, we, we can't do it by ourselves. You know, there's, we have a, we, we have a good staff, but still there's so much need in the community that we can't do it without volunteers. We can't do it without everybody together. Um, an example, because it's coming, the holidays are coming up, um, for, for Christmas last year, of course, we couldn't have a big event at our facility, and so we switched to delivering toys. And we had 100 volunteers come out and deliver toys to the families in the community. They took a hot meal and toys for everybody in the family as Santa's helpers so that people could enjoy you know, a, a, happy, a happy holiday. And so we'll be doing the same this year. So we'll be looking for volunteers that are really interested in getting involved in that, in, in that way as well. We've received such positive feedback, both from the families and from our volunteers. One of the volunteers came, we gave everybody a little schedule and they, the volunteer came back after they were done. They're like, can I do it again? Um, I went to this family and they told me that they'd been living off of peanut butter sandwiches and this was their first hot meal that they'd had in months since the pandemic started. Uh, uh, one of the families, the mom went on Facebook after she got the delivery and she's like, thank you so much to everybody involved because my kids were so excited that Santa, Santa's elves were coming to our house and they were at the window all, all morning long waiting for the elves to come and deliver. And these were the only gifts that they received for Christmas. So it was, it was heartwarming both on both sides to be able to bring joy to the volunteers and, and especially to the families. We've actually already started our toy drive. We give toys to, uh, the, to, the, young, to the kids. Um, up to um, teenage teenagers, so baby to teenagers, and then we give gift cards to the teenagers because, of course, they like to go to Target and get their own gifts. So we look for both toys and gift cards, but just donations in general. There's so much need in our community um, that you know we really look at different ways that we can provide and support our young people. We have a great relationship with the chamber. Two of our board members are actually um, board members um, on the chamber, and they're, they've just been amazing at um, bringing resources, whether it's volunteers, donations. You know, um, when the pandemic first started, um, Eileen was, was really instrumental in getting us involved with the Rotary. So through the chamber, the Rotary got involved with um, getting donations for our food pantry as well as financially supporting our food pantry. So really looking at all those different connections on how we can get people involved so that we can support the work we did has just been tremendous. I really would like to take this opportunity to thank the Chamber for this award. It's such an honor to be recognized for the work that we do. It's a passion, um, but it's always nice to be recognized. I want to thank everybody for all their support in really making a difference in our community. Thank you. Eileen, this is going to be such an amazing mm -hmm. event to attend. Mm -hmm. Give us more information on the dates, the times, and how we can get tickets. Absolutely. Well, the date is Thursday, November 18th. Okay. This is a luncheon at the beautiful Trump National Golf Club. The event is open to the entire community. Okay. It, tickets are available on the Chamber website at palacebernieschamber.com, or you can simply call us at 377-8111. Very good, Eileen. Thank you so much for being with us and sharing all of the stories. They were amazing. And thank you for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula. And please stay tuned for part two of our Around the Peninsula, where you will meet the citizens of the year.